my name is Lisa Ko, and my novel is Delivers. It was initially called Jackpot. There are some themes of gambling and luck and yeah. chance that are still there, but yeah. as the story sort of morphed into something else, it no longer seemed like the right title. Both the main characters leave and are left in different ways, um, yeah. by choice or not by choice. Give us a snapshot summary. It's about a young boy named Demingo, and his mother, Polly, is an undocumented immigrant from China. One day when he's 11 years old, his mom goes to work at the nail salon, and she never comes home. And he's left just not knowing what happened to her, feeling like maybe she abandoned him. He eventually gets adopted by um, a white couple who move him from the city to a small town upstate and they just want him to fit in and they change his name to Daniel Wilkinson. Doesn't really work. Um, and when he's 21, he starts to look for his mom. Why make the adoptive parents academics? Tell me oh, about yeah. that professional choice as we sit in this sure. classroom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, one thing that struck me about a lot of the real-life stories that I read that initially inspired the Weavers was this idea that um, U.S. courts were saying that adoptive families were a better fit for the children than their parents. And I was yeah. like, what does that mean, a better life? Um, I think it means money and yep. class and educational access, um, but is that really a better life and what does that mean for the child? So to have the parents be, the adoptive parents be academics was sort of, you know, an interesting way to explore that. I feel like this book would have been relevant had it come out the very year that you conceived of it, and it's going to be relevant for some time to come. Can you imagine a time when someone might read this book and think, wow, I can't believe it was ever like that? <laughs> it's a wonderful thing to imagine. Yeah. But I feel like when we look at the history of the U.S., you know, immigrants have always been an easy scapegoat for any time there's any sort of economic anxiety. Did you worry at all about it being labeled like an issues book? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I feel like it's serious and at the same time, it's not, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it sounds like it's depressing, but it's actually kind it's of not. funny in a lot of ways. Thanks for being with us today, Lisa. Thank you, Mary Laura. And thanks for joining us for A Word on Words. I'm Mary Laura Philpot. Keep reading. When I was like five years old, I had this pen pal. She had like all this cold cut stationery. It was like turkey, ham, pimento cheese, and the envelopes looked like bread. It was really disgusting. <laughs>